Madam President, let me uh, just join my uh, friend and colleague and neighbor from across the border, uh, Senator Klobuchar, in um, just acknowledging the passage of something that's really important. And um, credit to her staff, who I know worked tirelessly on this, and members of my staff, in particular Chance Costello, who worked tirelessly trying to find that common ground and thread the needle to get this done in a way that uh, would expedite its passage here in the Senate. And um, the, as Senator Klobuchar pointed out, the leadership on the Commerce Committee, Senators uh, Cantwell and Wicker, and their staffs also were instrumental in helping us get this across the finish line. But as uh, Senator, Senator Klobuchar pointed out, I think this is a good example of um, how, if you are willing to keep grinding and keep working at it, you can come up with solutions that are bipartisan and solutions that really get at problems that are, we're facing in this country. And I don't think anybody uh, would argue that we have a supply chain crisis in America. It's heightened the importance of addressing some of these shipping challenges. And our legislation, although it may not be the end all, uh, certainly takes us a long way toward addressing what have been identified as many of the problems associated with uh, trying to get goods and products uh, through our port system into the United States, and as importantly, trying to get those products, those things that we raise and grow and manufacture here in the United States, to their destinations around the world. And there have been lots of examples uh, which have been, uh, Senator Klobuchar has alluded to, uh, that she and, and uh, I and our staffs have um, in visiting with stakeholders out there, people who are impacted um, by this, uh, these bottlenecks that exist today, um, as we've listened to them, much of that input and feedback is incorporated into this legislation. So it does take strong measures to help tackle supply chain slowdowns, and it does level the playing field for American exporters, including South Dakota ag producers. And it does this in, in several ways, and I'll, she's covered it well, but let me just briefly touch on a couple of things. It does this by giving the FMC, or the Federal Maritime Commission, new authorities to crack down on unfair ocean carrier practices, whether that's a refusal to carry certain cargoes uh, or discrimination against certain commodities for export. We've all heard these examples. Senator Klobuchar alluded to this, of uh, containers leaving the ports in the United States that are empty, filled with air, and or the uh, carriers um, making determinations based upon the value of certain products instead of and then, and then assessing uh, detention and demurrage fees sometimes on shippers that are uh, unfair and unrelated, really, to um, anything that they have done. So providing the FMC with more tools to quickly resolve detention disputes, uh, bringing greater efficiency and transparency to a process that leaves many shippers frustrated, and especially small businesses, is uh, what this legislation is all about. These improvements, um, we believe, are gonna bring long-term positive changes to the maritime supply chain, which I hope will benefit not only exporters, uh, but importers and consumers alike. The legislation uh, not only levels the playing field for producers in South Dakota and across the nation, but it will also benefit exporters, small businesses, and as I said, consumers uh, across this country. So I hope, as uh, she does, that our colleagues in the House will be able to take this up and pass it. There has been some good work done there already, uh, much of it by uh, my colleague in South Dakota, a member of the uh, congressional delegation from our state, Dusty Johnson, who has been the leader on this legislation in the House of Representatives when it passed earlier this year. And now we have our chance here in the United States Senate. Um, and it is a product of a tremendous amount of work. Uh, Senator Klobuchar's staff and my staff spent not weeks but months negotiating and you know there are always disagreements there are always differences and then of course when you present it to the rest of our colleagues on the senate commerce committee they have their ideas unique ideas about things that they want to uh, fix and change and make better and so we went through that process but ultimately um, when we brought it up for consideration in front of the senate commerce committee uh, there were some amendments that were offered and uh, voted on, people got a chance to have their, their voices heard. A lot of the ideas that people had were incorporated into the base text. But ultimately, when it was voted out, it was voted out of the Senate Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee uh, unanimously. Came out without a dissenting vote, and that, I think, set us up here uh, on the floor of the United States Senate to process in a way, again, that uh, included uh, a high level of bipartisanship. And I 
credit to as we brought it to the floor. There were a couple of issues we had to, again, deal with, individual members who had, uh, you know, concerns, some with the legislation, some with other issues. But as is always the case here in the United States Senate, an individual senator can assert their rights in a way that enables them, gives them leverage on the process. But we were able to work through those things, and that product uh, today is now past the United States Senate. And hopefully, um, if the House is uh, inclined to do so, it would be great if they would pick it up and pass it, put it on the President's desk, and have him sign it into law, because I think it will take us a long way down the road toward leveling that playing field and addressing many of the concerns that have been identified um, by our exporters. I know that the farm organizations in my state of South Dakota have been very active in influencing this, uh, very concerned about the bottlenecks in uh, their ability to reach export destinations in a way that allows them to maximize uh, their profitability and in doing so uh, increase the prosperity of people all across the Midwest and states that we represent where agriculture uh, is the number one industry. So uh, congrats uh, to those who worked on this again, to the staff who've labored and to uh, my colleague from Minnesota. And there, this is not the first time we've collaborated on issues. We share not only a border, but obviously uh, a lot of commonality in terms of the issues that impact our states. And, um, and this in one, is one in particular where I think uh, the, the farmers, uh, ranchers, small business people, manufacturers in Minnesota and in South Dakota will all derive a benefit uh, once it's enacted into law. So we're going to do everything we can now to continue to press forward. Uh, we've gotten it this far. We need to now get uh, some additional action by the House of Representatives, whether that's, I'm not sure exactly what that looks like, whether that's going to conference with them. Preferably, obviously, they pick up and pass this bill, put it on the President's desk and, and turn it into law. But uh, I'm, pleased, I'm pleased, to, uh, pleased to be able to, uh, to be a part of this right. and to get a result today. And I'd be happy to, uh, to yield to our colleague and the chairman of the Senate Ag Committee, well, um, thank who you. also has big equities in this uh, discussion. Thank you, uh, Senator Thune and S Senator Cloture. I know that, uh, uh, that uh, the chair of the Commerce Committee is coming down to speak. I just wanted to uh, say congratulations. Thank you for your wonderful leadership on